Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. This is the fifth day of Mystery Week. I am so sorry I missed the day yesterday. I had a right palaver. Um, my memory cards corrupted. I lost all my files and because my memory cards are quite old, that happens quite a lot for me and I just refilm and like whatever. But I had an eight hour shift yesterday and I literally could not have found the time at any point yesterday to refilm. Um, so I'm refilming today. I've actually ordered a new memory card. Thank God for Amazon Prime, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, but yes, my apologies, but today we're covering the case of missing Tammy Kingery. So Tammy Kingery was 37 years old when she disappeared from South Carolina on the 20th of September 2014. She had her husband, Park, and their three children, Caitlin, Carter, and Cameron. She lived quite a standard life. She finished her degree in 2001, and after that she got a job in a nursing home as a nurse and she continued working there up until she disappeared in September of 2014. The story starts a few weeks before Tammy disappeared so she had developed a moderate clinical depression as diagnosed by her doctor as she just wasn't in a very good place in life. Alongside her depression she started to suffer physical symptoms. Anyone who suffered with depression will know you're constantly tired, you're never quite happy, you just want to lie in bed all day every day and just you begin to ache after a while. And I think that's what had started to happen to Tammy. She'd missed a few days off work, which was really, really unlike her. She was always up for going to work, but she'd actually called in sick a few days. And whenever she'd get home from work, the first thing she'd do is just go up to bed and go to sleep. However, then she started to have trouble sleeping. According to her sisters, she'd wake up in the middle of the night drenched in sweat and shaking, so much so that she'd have to change into different pyjamas. She was really sweating. Her sisters urged her to book a doctor's appointment and her and her sisters spoke every day. Her sisters knew that she was depressed, so they'd like constantly message her to make sure she was okay. And they said to Tammy to book another doctor's appointment for all these new symptoms she was having. And Tammy did that. She booked an appointment for the 21st of September, the day after she went missing. Now I have read some unconfirmed accounts here that Tammy had actually tried to commit suicide two weeks before she went missing but I just read that in a couple of articles I couldn't actually find a solid source for that um but I do also know that years before she tried to commit suicide as well and that came from her sisters people have reported that Tammy was saying she was feeling hopeless she didn't think any doctors or any medical person could help her she was just in this pit of dark depression which was a totally different person from the fun happy loving person she had been before the depression hit her her mum said that when she found out she was pregnant with her first child, she was over the moon, she was so, so happy. Her life was like on a high. She'd got married to Park when she was 19 years old. She had kids, she got a degree, she got a good job. Life was going pretty well for her and this sort of reflected in her personality. She was a very happy, bubbly person. Um, then the depression hit and everything changed. So on 20th of September, Tammy goes into work at 7am as usual. So in Tammy's job, she, like I said, worked in a nursing home and each nurse was kind of like in charge of a different department or like part of the nursing home, I suppose we can say. Um, and Tammy would care for her patients. Apparently she always got very close to her patients. Obviously there were older people and she would attend a lot of these people's funerals because of course they would die and she'd always do a speech at their funeral. She was very caring and very loving. However, on that morning of September 20th, her co-workers said that Cammy wasn't herself. She was very agitated. She was speaking very loudly. There wasn't like her at all. She was quite a reserved person. So the fact that she was suddenly raising her voice in conversation made her co-workers start to worry and she was also checking her blood pressure a lot. They've said that she checked her blood pressure that morning four times and each time her blood pressure was really, really high. And her co-workers were saying to her, like, Tammy, you need to calm down. The reason it's so high is because you're so agitated and so panicked. You've got to calm down. And then Tammy started to feel lightheaded and decided to call her husband to take her home not long after she'd come in for a shift. Tammy did actually have her car with her at the nursing home. She'd driven to work that morning but wasn't feeling up to driving home. So Park comes and picks her up. It's a Saturday morning, so Park's off work and the kids are all at home as well. Once she got home, she changes into her pyjamas and goes straight to bed. And she was witnessed coming home by her husband, of course, who took her and her 13 year old son, Carter. From what I can gather, I couldn't get an exact age of Cameron, but I think he was only like a baby, a toddler at the time. And their oldest daughter, Caitlin, was a teenager. She wasn't actually at home at the time. She was around a friend's house where she'd stayed the previous night. The Park's at home with the kids and he decides it's probably best to give Tammy some peace and quiet. So he decides to take the boys out and run some errands. So he drops Carter around his mother-in-law's house, Tammy's mother's house. 
and Carter's gonna mow the lawn for his grandma. And then him and Cameron go to some shops to buy some things, run some errands, just standard stuff. After a couple of hours, he goes back and picks up Carter and they all head home. However, when they get home, the house is like eerily quiet and the bedroom doors are open, whereas before it had been shut. So Park goes into their bedroom and sees that Tammy's not there. And then he spots a note that's been left on the side in the kitchen. The note said, went for a walk, be back soon, love you. Now Park immediately thinks this is very strange. His wife wasn't one to leave a note. If she wanted to say something to him, she'd just text him. So he immediately thought it was a little bit strange that she'd left this note. And he also noticed that she'd left her phone and her bag and her purse and the keys and everything that she needed to leave the house was all there as well. And he immediately started to panic because knowing his wife's mental state, it was just very out of character for her. So he says to Carter to look after the younger boy and Park heads out in the car to try and find Tammy. He assumes that Tammy's maybe tried to walk back to work to get her car. And so that's the route he takes and he doesn't find Tammy anywhere along that route. He then calls their daughter, Caitlin, and asks Caitlin to go out in the car with her friend and sort of look around the streets, see if she can see her mum either. And then Park drives around for a little bit longer and then heads home. Something else he noticed as well when he first walked into the house is the house was locked from the outside and the kind of door they had, Tammy would have had to have had her key to lock it from the outside, but her key was still in the house. Another thing to note as well about the area in which they lived is they lived in a very rural area of South Carolina. They pretty much built their house in the middle of the woods. There weren't many pedestrian friendly sidewalks that Tammy could have walked along. If she'd left the house and just walked down the road, she would have been doing just that, walking literally down the road. And it just wasn't a very safe area to go for a walk in. The house was completely backed by woods. So there was a likelihood as well that Tammy had walked into the woods, but again, Park knew that this wasn't like his wife to do that. She never just went for a walk in the woods. Caitlin arrives home and tells her dad that she thinks she spotted her mum. She said that her and her friend were driving down the road and a motorcycle comes towards them with a man on the front and a woman on the back with long blonde hair flowing out the back. And she said that she just knew it was her mum and her friend as well also corroborated that and said she was pretty sure it was Tammy. And so they turn around to try and follow this motorbike and it just disappeared. Um, and that's something that has always sort of thrown a spanner in the works of this investigation because Caitlin has always said that it was, she's pretty sure anyway that it was her mum on that bike. However, I am a little bit iffy on the timeline here. I'm not sure if Caitlin saw her mum on the bike whilst they were actually actively searching for her. Like whilst they were driving back towards the house, Tammy drove past them then or if they'd been out earlier in the day and that's when she'd seen her mum. This was made even stranger by the fact that a neighbour actually said that that morning they'd heard a very loud engine on the driveway of the Kingery house and it kind of sounded like a motorbike engine. Park calls his mother-in-law who immediately rushes around the house and she looks after the youngest child whilst the rest of them go out to look in the woods and they're basically on foot calling out Tammy's name to see if they can find her. At 2 p.m. Park decides to call the police and the police immediately come round and start searching for Tammy themselves. They search the house for any signs of a crime or a struggle and they found absolutely nothing. Everything was exactly where it should be. They brought in search dogs and gave the dogs Tammy's scent and this led absolutely nowhere. The dogs had no scent of her whatsoever. And they started looking in the wider area. They even got a helicopter out to search and they got dozens of police officers looking for her and they found nothing. Um, they did also put out to the media, to the public, and a few reported sightings did come in, but nothing that could ever have been confirmed. Park also organised his own volunteer search, which happened a whole week after Tammy disappeared. He said over 100 people turned up to the search, which was more than he ever expected. And they basically just searched the woods, but they went up to, I think, a 10 mile radius of the house. And they didn't find anything apart from one search group said they were looking in the woods and they came across this smell and they could only associate the smell with death. It was this tiny abandoned shack in the middle of the woods and when they opened the door they were expecting to find the worst but what they actually found was the corpse of a dead dog inside of a plastic bag. Inside the shed were also things like gloves, sponges and an old mattress. It was just a very odd array of objects and a dead dog in a carrier bag. When the volunteer search told the police about this, the police said that they had found this abandoned shack in their original search, but hadn't thought anything of it. It didn't really have any connection to Tammy. Just because it had a very strange dead dog in a plastic bag, 
They couldn't link that in any way to Tammy's disappearance. Originally, when police released the details of Tammy's disappearance, they didn't talk about the depression she was suffering from because they didn't want to bring in any false leads or false information. However, when it came quite clear that they weren't getting in anything valuable, they released the details of Tammy's depression to give the public maybe a sense of urgency. At the same time as this, police were looking through all of Tammy's technology, her computer, her phone, and they requested a warrant to look through Tammy's deleted text messages. Eventually the warrant came through and they managed to have a look at these messages and they actually saw that Tammy was texting two men romantic messages and of course these two men were not her husband, they were completely random men. Now these two men were fully, fully investigated by the police and I couldn't find any specific details about the investigation into these men but the police have turned around and said they're like very sure that these men have nothing to do with it. I'm not even sure what the nature of these romantic texts were, they might have just been like harmless flirting, they might have been proper like sexting, I really don't know what these messages consisted of. For months as well the public and the police deliberated over whether the note was actually written in Tammy's handwriting but a few months after Tammy disappeared the police finally confirmed that it was definitely Tammy that had written the note herself. So I have a couple of questions here that you might want to ponder over. The first question I have is did she change out her pyjamas? before she disappeared. This is something that I haven't been able to find any information about in any of the articles I've read. Um, in the missing people's posters it just says that she's wearing a light coloured shirt and dark pants um, which might have been her pyjamas or she might have like changed out of her pyjamas before going out. Did the police ever look at her pyjamas? Did they find them? I don't know. That's why it's a question that I have I suppose. The second question I have is why did Tammy write a note and not just text Park to say that she was going out? Like Park just said as soon as he saw the note he knew that something was off because she would usually just text him to let him know as I'm sure anybody would do nowadays. Like if I got home to my flat and saw a note from my sister like oh just heading out, I would definitely question that because I'd be like she could have just texted me like that's really weird. Now let's talk about some suspects, some theories. Um, we're going to talk about her marriage here first. Apparently her marriage was strained. From what I can gather, Tammy had confessed not long before she disappeared about herself having an affair a few years earlier. So Park knew about Tammy's infidelity here and she'd been asking Park for a divorce and Park was basically saying like, no, I love you, I want to stay with you, we're not having a divorce. And according to Park, Tammy would only ever talk about divorce and breaking up when she was on a depressive downswing, when she was really struggling with her depression. Then the next day she'd wake up and be totally fine and over the moon and their marriage would be absolutely fine. Park said that he knew any problem they had in their marriage wasn't a personal thing about him. It was her depression and it was just making things difficult but he kind of said that he knew that he loved her and he wanted to be with her and he would support her through this. According to the police, Park is not a suspect in this case. He has an airtight alibi. Um, he was seen at the shops on both security footage and through receipts. He has literally has receipts with timestamps on for when he was in the shops with his son. Um, he has a very airtight alibi here. But even if he didn't, I have watched quite a few interviews with Park and I personally think he comes across as very genuine. Um, I'm always one to suspect boyfriends and husbands in this case, but... For me, in this case, I just do not think Park had anything to do with it, even if he didn't have that alibi. I just, he doesn't seem to be that kind of person. A lot of people said he perhaps did it for Tammy's life insurance settlement. Her life insurance was worth $15,000, but Park has said that actually, since Tammy went missing, he's never claimed any of that money and he actually had to file for bankruptcy because they were a two income family now it was only him providing for himself and his children he even had to withdraw the four thousand dollar reward money he put out for any information about Tammy because he had to feed his children so he had no motive here at all it actually put him in a really bad place rather than making his life any better also the fact that before Park went out with the boys leaving Tammy at home alone their 13 year old son had actually seen Tammy in bed and confirmed that she was 100% there. Although I do want to say as well that Park did do a polygraph test and he has admitted that the results came back as questionable. He can't talk about what he was asked, he can't talk about his results but he has said that it was questionable but he's also said that he was very nervous and he always was scared of doing a lie detector test because he always knew he'd fail one because he is nervous about that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, I just don't see any reasonable way in which Park can be seen as a suspect here. To me it's very clear he loved his wife and he wanted to stand by her, 
even when things got really hard. Tammy's mental health clearly wasn't in a good state. She'd been diagnosed with the moderate clinical depression. I'm wondering if there was perhaps more here. Her co-workers talking about her sort of like manic morning at work that day makes me wonder if she's had any other mornings like that. I'm leaning towards maybe she had bipolar or something like that which would explain why she was so so depressed on one day and then the next day she'd wake up and be happy and like loving life and then again she would just go on another downswing. I have known people with bipolar and a lot of what her family and friends are saying about her does lead me to believe that maybe she was suffering with this undiagnosed. Perhaps it wasn't bipolar at all and she just had a mental breakdown. Maybe that morning that day she just had a breakdown and she just needed to get out and that's what she did. She just left the house and walked. Was she walking aimlessly or did she have an intention here? Was she going to commit suicide? Now personally in this case I do think suicide is the most likely option. I'm not sure how she would have committed suicide. Um, it doesn't look like she had any supplies on her. I don't feel like that's the right word to say but I can't think of anything else which would work here. Um, I'm not sure how she would have done it but I do think it is the theory here that makes most sense. The fact that she'd ended her note with love you makes it seem that she wasn't intending just to go for a couple of hours. It was like she was intended to be gone for a while. And Park said it just seems a bit unusual that she put love you at the end of the message like that. However, this could be disputed by the fact that her daughter saw her on a motorbike with another man. Was Tammy actually romantically involved with another man at this point and did he come and pick her up? and just take her away and she started a new life or perhaps this man hurt her in some way and that's why she's never come back. Um, I think her family do believe that some kind of foul play was involved here but I'm not 100% sure on that. I think it would be quite clear cut that it was suicide if it wasn't for the fact that her daughter had seen her on a motorbike and the neighbour had heard perhaps a motorbike engine on their driveway. But again, who was this man? The police looked at all of Tammy's deleted tech and they researched the two men she was texting and the police said they had absolutely nothing to do with it. I'm assuming they had alibis. But if this was a different man, how was she contacting him and how have the police never found him? And also, if Tammy had just walked away from the house and she'd been walking on the road, people would have seen her. She was quite distinctive. She was five foot four, she had long blonde hair. She was actually a very, very pretty woman. Um, you would think people would see her. Of course, another theory here is that of foul play. Um, the police have said there was no sign of struggle or crime in the house. Um, so I don't think whoever's hurt her has entered the house and dragged her out at all. Maybe she did just go for a walk and encountered somebody with bad intentions while she was walking away from the house. Other than that, I think they're the main theories. Suicide, new life, foul play, maybe an accident, but I feel like the chances of that are very slim. As always, I would love to know what you guys think about this case. If you have any extra details to add about this case, make sure you stick them in the comments. And if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and make sure you press that subscribe button. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.